Ladies and gentlemen, rarely in human history have so many people around the world placed their trust in so few. Your deliberations over the next two weeks will decide the fate not only of those alive today, but also of generations yet unborn. So I can only urge you to think of your grandchildren as I think of mine and of those billions of people without a voice, those for whom hope is the rarest of sensations, those for whom a secure life is a distant prospect. Most of all, I urge you to consider the needs of the youngest generation, because none of us has the right to assume that for art today, they should give up their tomorrow. On an increasingly crowded planet, humanity faces many threats, but known is greater than climate change. It magnifies every heart and intention of our existence. It threatens our ability to feed ourselves, to remain healthy and safe from extreme weather to manage the natural resources that support our economies and to other the humanitarian disaster of mass migration and increasing conflict. In damaging our climate, we become the architects of our own destruction. While the planet can survive the scorching of the earth and the rising of the waters, the human race cannot. The absurd thing is that we know exactly what needs to be done. We know we cannot adapt sufficiently to go on as we are, nor can we build a new atmosphere. To avoid catastrophe, we must restrict climate change to less than two degrees, which requires a dramatic reduction in carbon emissions. This can be done. We have the knowledge, the tools and the money. So I pray that in passing national interest, you will not lose sight of the international necessity.